Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Hey, Shalom Israel, Most High Christ Blessed. Welcome to another edition of 15 Minutes with the Captains. I'm Captain Josiah to my right. Officer Abraham. Today's topic is going to be respect versus respect of persons. Okay, respect versus respect of persons. Um, those, those lines can, can get blurred a little bit. You know, I see sometimes where someone uh, in leadership is shown respect and that same level of respect may not be shown unto someone else, and they, they take it as respect of persons, okay? So let's delve into the scriptures to see what the Bible says. Uh, 1 Timothy 5. It's the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 5, verse 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. Read again. Let the elders <clears throat> that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. It says, let the elders that rule well be counted with double honor. Double honor. So you show double respect unto an elder that rules well. Come on. Especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. It says, especially they that do what? Labor in the word and doctrine. So now, that's not respecter of persons. That's showing respect or honor, like the Bible says, give double honor unto the elders that rule well. Okay, there's no sin there. It says double honor unto them. Read it one more time. Let the elders that rule well be counted <clears throat> worthy of double honor, uh -huh. especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. Okay, so now Leviticus 19. Leviticus 19, verse 32. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 32. Watch this. Thou shalt <clears throat> rise up before the hoary head, and honor the face of the old man, and fear thy God, I am the Lord. So now it says, rise up before the hoary head, meaning the man with gray hairs, the older brother, right? Read it again. Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head. That's a law. Thou shalt, right? Like thou shalt not, thou shalt, that's a law. Rise up before the hoary head, meaning show respect unto those that are of age, read on. And honor the face of the old man. And honor the face of the old man. Remember, 1 Timothy 5 said, give double honors unto the elders that rule well. Okay? So now, it, just because you have an old brother in front of you, right? Mm -hmm. Like an old fool, for example, right. as the scripture may say, right? Does that mean he gets double honor? No, it does not. Give me Sirach real quick. <clears throat> Let's let's give clarification on this hoary head right here. Um, not Sirach, Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon. We're going to go to Sirach here. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4. Right? 4 and 8. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4 <clears throat> verse 8. Watch this. For honorable age is not that which standeth in length of time. So now, Leviticus 19 said, rise up before the hoary head. And, and honor the man of age or something like that, said, right? Mm -hmm. So watch this, read. For honorable age is not that which standeth in length of time. Honorable age, the scripture is not necessarily talking about um, that which standeth in length of time. Read on. Nor that is measured by number of years. Nor by the number of years. So just because you 80, 90, 100, that's not necessarily what the Bible is talking about. Read. But. But what? Wisdom is the gray hair unto men. It says wisdom is the gray hair unto men. Just like 1 Timothy 5 said, 
Okay, let the elders that rule well be counted with double honor. Now, do we still show a certain level of respect unto those that are aged? Absolutely. Okay, but more so the men that rule well. That's why it says, especially those that labor in the gospel. Okay, it use other words, but just basically the gospel. Mm -hmm. All right, read it one more time. But wisdom is the gray hair unto men, uh -huh. and an unspotted life is old age. You see that? An unspotted life is old age. So as you age in this truth, in righteousness, that's what the scriptures is talking about. Okay, give me Proverbs real quick. <clears throat> Proverbs 16. And uh, 31. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 31. <clears throat> the hoary head is a crown of glory, if it be found in the way of righteousness. You see that? So remember Leviticus 19 said, rise up before the hoary head. This says the hoary head is a crown of glory, if what? It be found in the way of righteousness. If they have repented, like, like Wisdom of Solomon said, the unspotted life. Okay, if it be found in the way of righteousness, meaning keeping God's commandments. Give me that in Deuteronomy 6. To show them what righteousness is real quick. <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. Mm -hmm. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he had commanded us. So righteousness is doing all the commandments of the Lord. All right, go back to that in Proverbs real quick. Proverbs 16 and 31. Proverbs Righteousness is applying God's commandments. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 31. The hoary head is a crown of glory mm -hmm. if, if what? it be found in the way of righteousness. So now, like Wisdom of Solomon said, honorable age is not necessarily the length of years, but an unspotted life. Okay, the keeping of God's commandments. So now, when you show respect, a certain level of respect unto the elders, the men, the, the, the officers, the captains, the deacons, and so forth, that's called respect. You're supposed to do that. God says that. Okay. So now let's delve into the aspect of what is respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. Okay. Give me that in Deuteronomy 16. Deuteronomy 16 and 18. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 18. Watch this. Judges and officers shalt thou make thee in all thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee throughout thy tribes. Mm -hmm. and, thy sh and, thy and they shall judge the people with they, just they judgment. What? They shall judge the people with just judgment. So when you set up judges and officers, okay, that's why the Bible is the book of laws, mm -hmm. right? You have to have judges in place to judge those matters, okay, when you break God's laws, right? Right. Read it again. Judges and officers <clears throat> shalt thou make thee in all thy gates, uh -huh. which the Lord thy God giveth thee throughout thy tribes. Come on. And they shall judge the people with just judgment. That's the key. They shall judge the people with just judgment. Read on. Thou shalt not rest judgment. Mm -hmm. Those thou shalt not respect persons. So it says you should not rest judgment, meaning struggle to give us a particular sentence out based on that crime, based on them breaking that particular law. It says you should not respect persons. Come on. Neither take a gift. Uh -huh. For a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise uh -huh. and pervert the words of the righteous. That's the key right there. Because oftentimes you may be overshadowed with gifts. Here's this, here's that, here's this, here's that. And you begin to uh, start liking somebody. You like them. Now, all of a sudden, you put judgment aside because you like them. That's why it says, don't do that. Okay, read it again. Thou shalt not rest judgment. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not respect persons. Neither take a gift. Uh -huh. For a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise and pervert the words of the righteous. Okay, okay. Gifts can pervert your judgment. Read on. That which is altogether just shalt thou follow. Mm -hmm. And thou mayest live and inherit the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. It says, that which is altogether just shalt thou follow. That's what we're supposed to be after. Everything that's just, just and right. Okay? From there, give me Leviticus 19. Leviticus 19 and 15. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 15. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Now, remember it says you shall shut up judges and officers. That's 
soldiers, officers, captains, deacons, all the way up to the bishops and so forth. That's the same thing. It says you should what? Do no unrighteousness in judgment. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, uh -huh. nor honor the person of the mighty. Mm -hmm. But in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. So now notice that it says you should not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. So you got a matter in front of you. You got a, basically a poor person and somebody that's rich, for example. They have an issue between them and you automatically lean towards the person that is quote unquote wealthy in judgment. The scripture is telling you don't do that. Okay, read it again. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. But in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. It says, in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. Because oftentimes what will happen is when it mentions the person of the mighty here, that's the person that's of wealth, that's constantly giving you, oh, here's this, here's that, here's this. Or they give all these abundant alms and so forth, or alms deeds for that matter, okay? But they do something wicked to the person that's poor, and you're like, ah, don't worry about it, brother, you know? Go from, uh, from there, give me a Deuteronomy uh, 1, Deuteronomy chapter 1. And we're going to get more into these judges and officers. Deuteronomy 1 and 15. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 15. So I took the chief of your tribes, wise men and known, and made them heads over you, mm -hmm. captains over thousands and captains over hundreds and captains over fifties and captains over tens and officers among your tribes. That's why they have the, uh, the different ranks. Okay. It wasn't just made up out of thin air. Okay. It comes from the law. Okay. Read on. And I charged your judges at that time saying. Notice that it calls the captains, the officers and so forth. It calls them judges. And I charge your judges to do what? At that time saying, hear the causes between your brethren and judge righteously between every man and his brother and the stranger that is with him. Right. It says, hear the cause and judge righteously. You get all the evidence properly and you judge that matter correctly. That's not the same thing as showing respect unto somebody that's honorable. Okay. Read it again. And I charged your judges at that time, saying, Hear the causes between your brethren, and judge righteously between every man and his brother, Come on. and the stranger that is with him. Watch this. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment. That's the key. Respect persons in judgment. The Bible says we should not do that. You should not respect persons in judgment. So when it's time to be judged, you can't have respect unto that person. Okay. They, based on the crime that they committed or the law that they broke, they have to be judged accordingly as the scripture says. Okay, read again. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment, uh -huh. but you shall hear the small as well as the great. That's the key right there. You shall hear the small as well as the great. You got somebody that's quote unquote small in front of you, not in stature, but, you know, societal standards or whatever the case. Somebody that's great. Oh, this great honorable man or whatever. Okay, and again. You're so quick to push the person that's small or poor or less in stature, okay, in societal standards versus the person that's great. The scriptures tell us don't do that. Read it again. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment, mm -hmm. but you shall hear the small as well as the great. Come on. You shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is God's. You see that? The judgment is God's. You sh that's another thing. Oh, I'm scared of that, brother. Brother, you know big muscular guy and you got the slim brother that you know you can physically take that brother now all of a sudden judgment don't mean nothing no more because you're dealing with the brother that's you know oh, karate master yeah karate master 250 pounds six foot eight built like you know lebron james or whatever the case now you're not going to judge him because you got the little brother there that you know you can take him okay read again you shall not respect persons in judgment mm -hmm. but you shall hear the small as well as the great come on you shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is God's. Uh -huh. And the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me, and I will hear it. Right. That's your chain of command. So you have smaller matters that you can deal with amongst ranks like soldiers, officers, attends, and so forth and so on. But if it's a heavy matter like marriage counsel or, you know, the heavier matters in the law, you take those things up the chain of command. Now, give me a Deuteronomy... Uh, 
19 and 15. Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 15. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity. Now, this is an example of actual judgment. It says one witness shall not do what? Rise up against a man for any iniquity uh -huh. for or for any sin in any sin that he sinneth mm -hmm. at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. So now you as judges in Israel, okay, one person brings something to you. You can't immediately pass judgment based on just somebody telling you something. It says at the mouth of two or three witnesses shall what? At the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses uh -huh. shall the matter be established. So now if somebody comes and tell, if I go and I say this brother did this, if he don't admit to doing it, okay, the matter has to be squashed. You got to let the Lord reveal that thing. I can't, you can't immediately pass judgment on him because I said something. Okay. That's called respect of persons right there. Read on. If a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him that which is wrong, uh -huh. then both the men between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord. That's the key right here. Then both the men, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Come on. Read again, 17. Then both the men between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord, uh -huh. before the priests and the judges, which shall be in those days. Uh -huh. Watch this. And the judges shall make Diligent inquisition. That's the key. Diligent inquisition. They have to get to the bottom of what happened. They have to weigh out and, and search out all the evidence. Okay. Oh, brother so-and-so said this. Well, brother, did you do it? No, I didn't. And then you have to see if there's more witnesses. Did, did somebody else see it? Okay. Diligent inquisition. You don't just go off one person's opinion about something. Okay. Read again. And the judges shall make diligent inquisition. And behold, if the witness be a false witness, if the witness be a false witness, read, and hath testified falsely against his brother, uh -huh. then shall ye do unto him as he had thought to have done unto his brother. Uh -huh. So shall thou put the evil away from among you. So now, that's righteous judgment right there. You got a false witness. He's basically bringing a false accusation against somebody to bring a particular judgment on them. So now it says you should do unto him as he had thought to do unto his brothers. Okay. But now you have, like you mentioned in uh, the other scripture you read in Deuteronomy, let's say the false witness is the great brother, the, the big bulky brother. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden, well, don't worry about it, bro. Just, you know, I'm going to let this one slide. You know what I'm saying? That's right. called respect of persons right there. The Bible says, no, you should do unto him as he, is th as he, as he thought to do what? Uh, verse 19. 19. Then shall ye do unto him as he had thought to have done unto his brother. You shall do unto him as he thought to do unto his brother. Okay. Read on. So shall thou put the evil away from among you. Uh -huh. And those which remain shall hear and fear and shall henceforth commit no more any such evil among you. Right. And in that evidence, that, that particular judgment, that's supposed to be passed out throughout the congregation. Oh, this, this situation happened. The brother tried to rise up as a false witness and so forth. Everybody needs to know about it so they don't repeat that same action. Right. Okay. The point is to bring righteousness and just judgment in Israel. We don't need liars and false witnesses and so forth. Okay. That's respect of persons. That's an example right there. Okay. On the other side of it, if you judge the matter righteously, you know, then you're keeping the commandments as a just judge or a just officer. From there, give me uh, Proverbs 8, 18, excuse me, Proverbs 18 and um, 5. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 5. It is not good to accept the person of the wicked to overthrow the righteous in judgment. Read again. It is not good to accept the person of the wicked to overthrow the righteous in judgment. You see that? It is not good to accept the person of the wicked. That's that false witness, for example. And it says, and overthrow the righteous in judgment. Why? Because now you have respect of persons unto the, unto the brother that was wicked. Okay, the false witness, you like him and you don't like the other brother. And the scriptures say what? It is not good to do what? It's not good to accept the person of the wicked to overthrow the righteous in judgment. Now you overthrow the righteous in judgment because you didn't hear the matter properly. You didn't uh, get diligent inquisition with yourself and other officers and, and through counsel and so forth. Okay. 
That's an example of respecter of persons right there. Okay. From there, last scripture, give me Sirach 37. Sirach 37 and verse 14. Let me get that with you. Sirach chapter 37, verse 14. For a man's mind is sometimes wont to tell him more than seven watchmen that sit above in an high tower. Read one more time. For a man's mind is sometimes wont to tell him more than seven watchmen that sit above in an high tower. So now, what does that have to do with respect versus respect of persons? It says, a man's mind is sometimes wont to tell him more than seven watchmen that sit in a high tower. So now, you have a brother about a, a particular situation, or a sister for that matter, and they go, and you got seven different people, or five or six, whatever it may be. You got multiple people telling you the same thing, right? Nah, this is what you need to do. Do this, do this, do this, right? Mm -hmm. All the counsel says do this. But your mind is telling you, nah, all of them wrong. Okay? That's called, that's an example of either respect of persons or you just wicked as hell. All right? Meaning you don't want to take the counsel. Oftentimes, that's respect of persons as well. Because guess what can happen? Maybe that's not the, the, the deacon in the region or the deacon in the school. Those are just the officers telling you that. The soldiers in the offices, they telling you, you know, seven of them told you the same thing. You don't listen to them, but deacon so-and-so told you, now you want to listen, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that could be an example of respect of persons, right? You got seven people telling you the same thing and you don't want to hear it. But now one person tells you, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Now I get it. Now I understand. Okay. Now, it could be respect of persons or, like I said, you wicked and you just may not see it right then. The person just may not see it. Okay. Sometimes it's not respect of persons. They might not just see it at the moment. It may take them some time. They may come to their senses later. And then just so happens that the next person that speaks to them, oh, okay, now I get it. You know, those matters lead that into the hands of the Lord and it'll reveal itself in time, okay, whether or not that person really has that respect of person's spirit on them. Okay, so Lord willing, y'all got something out of the lesson with that, we say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed, but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth